What's going on guys, Tosker here, and in this video we're going to cover dependency injection and using Ninject in WPF. Now I don't want to get too into explaining dependency injection because there's a lot of things out there, um, and I will link articles below if you are curious about that, but for now we're just going to do a brief explanation. So here imagine we have our uh, main class with the entry uh, point here of the main method. Now if we want to create a foo object, which is of this class here, uh, it has a dependency of bar. Now we can dependency inject this, so pass it into its constructor. Dependency injection is basically a fancy way of passing an argument. But anyways, we have to pass it the bar and then we're going to set it to its uh, private field here. But now the problem is bar also has a dependency. If we go down to bar, bar has a dependency of bar component. And then we would also need to inject the bar component here uh, and set that. So the problem is, is we need the component, and then we need the bar, and then we need the foo. So if you see up here, we have to create the component, then we have to create the object, and then we have to create the bar ob or the foo object, and then we have to create the bar object just to create a foo object. Now imagine if bar component had some dependencies, or if foo had more dependencies, or bar had multiple dependencies. We're going to have to continue to just uh, keep passing this on, and after a while we're going to have a really big collection of things that uh, are going to make it hard. Now, as I mentioned, I will link a really good article below that actually explains Ninject as well, but it also gives you the preamble to explaining what dependency injection is and what inversion of control is. Anyways, moving on, uh, we're going to go over here to our Visual Studio, so let me move that out of the way. And over here in our project, uh, because I have a lot going on, we have some things already set up as usual. Here in our constructor injector uh, project, we just are binding to a current uh, in the content control, which of course is over in our app dot view model or our app view model. So we see we have our app view model. Uh, we also have utilities such as observable object and relay command. If you're unfamiliar with these, check out the description below to find videos I've made on them. So down here in our app view model, we'll just take a look at that. Uh, this is what we're binding to. So we're binding to the current object. Uh, it has a dependency of the data view model. And we'll be passing that in and setting it to the current. Uh, as you see here, we do have a data view model that we pass. Now if we go visit our data view model and take a look in here, our data view model has a dependency of the iData service. So we have to, of course, pass that through here and set it. And then we have our data service which uh, we are going to pass. If we look over here in our services we are passing it a data service and if we look over here, oh look at that. The data service has a dependency on the iDialog service. And then if we go look over at our dialog service we luckily see that we have no dependencies here so this is where it ends. So we're going to have an entry point here uh, if we go down, let me close these. If we go down here to our app.xaml and we go to the code here and we take a look, we have a couple options. Option one is, is we can do what we did in the example in the beginning of the video, just instantiate all these, pass them through, uh, get the app view model and then open the main window and set its data context. Or two, we can do the same thing but do it in all one big long line. And just a side note, if you're wondering here what's going on, we have an app startup. If we take a look over here at our app.xaml, we see that I changed it from startup URI, which it was this, to just startup, because this will naturally open up our main window. We just want to change it to startup, and we want to name the method, and we're essentially assigning our entry point here. So we go to our code behind here, and we see that this is where our application will enter. Now we're doing this because with Ninject we have to set up the bindings and the dependencies beforehand and we don't really want to do that into our main windows code behind. And I know what you might be thinking, you might not even like this approach, but uh, rest assured that at the end I will be showing you a method where we can keep everything basically the same and we actually won't have to use the code behind of our app XAML at all. But for the sake of understanding things first, we're going to do it this way. So now that we got all the explaining out of the way, uh, we're going to go over here and we're going to get our project and call manage NuGet packages. Then over here in browse, we're going to type in ninject. Going to see the NuGet package here 
and then click install. All right, and with that installed, we're gonna go back over to our startup here and we're gonna start implementing it. Now, what we're first gonna create here is an I kernel and add in the ninjack namespace here and we'll just give it a name of kernel and this will equal a new standard kernel which is a basic implementation given by Ninject. Now what the kernel is, is basically a container um, for our dependencies. And it's basically the core of our application at this point. So to give you an example, we're gonna call the kernel and then we're gonna call it bind. And we're going to give it a type of iDialog service. Of course, we'll add in that namespace as well. And what we're doing here is we're going to set up the bind. So the kernel knows that when we get the iDialog service, we want to bind this to a dialog service. So whenever it's trying to resolve a dependency of iDialog service, it's going to give it a dialog service that we set up in our binding. Next, we can do the same here. So kernel bind, and we can do this for our iData service. And we'll just bind that to the data service that we created. So now when we get objects, uh, it understands how to resolve these dependencies that uh, a class or object may have. So then we're just gonna create a variable here called app VM. And we're going to set this equal to, so we're gonna get the kernel and it's going to get an app view model instance. So let's take a look at our app view model just so we can see what maybe might be going on. So we see here that we're telling the kernel to get an app view model. And when it goes to try and get this, it's going to say, okay, well, uh, we have a dependency of data view model. Now, because with Ninjek, because this is our only constructor, it's going to know just to instantiate uh, the data view model for us, essentially binding it to itself. However, if we had an alternative constructor here, uh, it wouldn't do that and we would have to then bind the data view model to itself, which I'll show you later on. But for now, this works and is okay. Okay, but then we got our data view model here. So then we'll go to our data view model and we're going to see, okay, well, this has a dependency. So you see where this is going. We're just going to go through a line of dependencies. And because we set up the bindings and told it what to do, uh, it's going to be able to resolve all of this for us. But anyways, moving back on to our startup here. So now that we have our app view model, we just wanna get our main window here. Uh, because we changed our startup URI to this, we're actually going to have to set up the window ourselves. So we're just going to create a new main window and then we're going to say the main window here, data context equals the app view model that we created. And then lastly, we'll just tell the main window to show. Now we're about to run the application, but before we do, you may be wondering, okay, well, this doesn't really help much because okay, down here we had to instantiate all of this, but now in my entry point, I have to basically set up all these bindings. And then instead of this, down here, I'm just gonna have a long list of bindings. Now there is going to be a way we can clean this up. We can just put these into a module that's provided by Ninject, and then we can load it through the assembly. Um, we're gonna do that later, but for now, this is fine. So now with our application running, we're going to hit load. And we see, of course, uh, it's going to load our data, but our data is dependent on the iDialog service. For some odd reason, this would be a horrible thing to do in an application. Um, but just for the sake of example, it has to display a message that it's been loaded before it loads it. So then we'll click OK. And then we see now it loads up our project, or our data, rather. Now there is another way we can do this, uh, almost exactly the same, but if for some reason you don't want to use a constructor, but in most cases you should either want to or need to, going to go over here and check out there are other there are also by the way other options to do this I'm only showing these two because these are the only two ways I really could see anybody really wanting to do this unless your circumstance is very particular so next we're gonna go over to our setter injection and we basically if we check out here we go over here 
we have the whole thing basically the same. The only difference is, is how we're injecting these. So if we go over to our view models, let's say, and we go to our app view model, see everything here is basically the same. And then we go to our data view model. And now we see something's a little different. In this case, we're not passing it through the constructor, but instead we're creating a setter here with the attribute inject, which is provided by ninject. And we tell it that it has a dependency of the iData service and then we just set it up here. Now you might be wondering why would I want to use it this way? Um, let's say we had an object where, for example, our data view model here. If maybe during runtime we wanted to be able to change this dependency, we didn't always necessarily need it in the constructor. We could later on target a different data service. Um, so then we have this method set up here where we can call this during runtime or whatever the user wants to do. Um, but we also want to make sure that this gets injected as well. Now lastly, for those of you who hate the idea of over here having this whole startup here, uh, we do have an alternative option and we can go to our WPF injection project. And this we haven't set up at all, so you're gonna do, uh, you're gonna watch me actually set this up. Now what our goal is going to be is if we go over here to our main window, and we go down to our XAML, we see that we actually don't have a content control set up. Now what we want to do here is of course bind to the current like we've always been doing, but we want to be able to set the data context in here by targeting the data context property and then binding to the app view model from here uh, without needing to externally set up the window and then open it. Now the way we're going to do this, if we go over here, we're going to go to our ninject folder. I have these classes um, just named and set up, so we need a service locator and a service module. We're going to start here with the service locator. So we'll go over here, we just have an empty class. So what we first want to do is set up a private read-only iKernel. Of course, resolve that namespace. And we'll simply call this kernel. And then we'll set up a constructor here. And then here we're just going to set the kernel to a new standard kernel. And then lastly, because we want to be able to get our app view model, we're going to create a public app view model. And we'll just call this app view model. And this will just be a getter. So we'll just get and return a kernel dot get app view model and that's set up. Now what we could do here is of course like we did last time we could do a kernel uh, and then start calling bindings but as I mentioned earlier we don't always want to just do a list of bindings that clutter up things that perhaps we don't want to clutter up. So we'll erase that for now and what we're going to do instead is we're going to go over here to our service module and we see this is empty and what we first want to do is set up the ninject module base here and resolve that namespace. Now this is a module base that is provided by ninject and what we're required to do is set up a override of the load method and then here we want to set up our bindings. So now with our module set up, this is the module set up for the bindings for our services. We can go back over here to our service locator and what we want to do here is pass it our service module that we created. So we'll do a new service module. So now we pass the kernel, the module that we wanted to do all the bindings in. Lastly, we want to go over here to our app.xaml now, where we have our data template. We want to set up a namespace to ninject. So XMLNS ninject CLR name space WPF injection. We want to find our ninject folder. And then down here in our resources, we want to reference it. So here we'll just call ninject. And then we want to get our service locator. We want to give it a key so we can reference uh, in our XAML later. And we'll just call this service locator and close that off. And now that we can access the service locator, we want to go over here to our main window. And last but not least, go down here and we want to get our data context property and this is where we're going to set up a binding the path will be to the app view model property that we created in the locator and then of course we want to set this source here 
to a static resource of our service locator. So now that we have a pointer to our service locator, we can get the app view model property as we've seen here. Right over here, we have our app view model property, so that's the path. And we set up a resource so we can point to the service locator. And it'll get, with our new binding setup, a instance of our app view model for us. And now with our application running, we hit load. See, we get a little message pop up. Click OK, and our data loads. So now we're able to resolve dependencies and set this up without needing to use any kind of startup code behind or logic. And it's actually a little cleaner. So guys, that's the end of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them. Um, and as I mentioned, if you're looking for more specific information, I will link a few good articles down below so you can do more reading.